Good afternoon, everyone. It's August 24th, 2014. Welcome to Pottstown Butterflies. My name is Ron Ryle. I live at 344 West Beach Street with my wife, Carol, and our cat, Sneakies. For the past 21 years, we have maintained one of the oldest urban butterfly habitats in the United States in our backyard. Again, the name of our documentary is Pottstown Butterflies. Carol and I are dedicating our documentary to Dennis Wozniak, our former city councilman who recently passed away. Dennis was a strong supporter of our butterfly garden open houses and helped us solve the garbage problem at Pottstown Center. Butterfly populations have decreased by 40% in Pennsylvania over the past several years due to habitat destruction according to most butterfly experts. I wanted to start our film at Upland Square Shopping Center to describe some of the habitat destruction in the Pottstown area. We are two miles from the butterfly garden habitat. We prefer to call it a habitat, but most people call them butterfly gardens. We'll be there in a few minutes, but before we get there, we're gonna drive and show you some of the things that have happened over the last several years. Right now we're at Upland Square Shopping Center and this is at least a 20 acre parking lot with buildings and uh, butterflies need plants. Their life depends on nectar plants for them to feed on. Also host plants for the caterpillars to eat after the butterfly lays its eggs. Each butterfly has a host plant it depends on for its life cycle. For instance, the monarch depends on the milkweed for its life. No milkweed, no monarchs. So in our area, we have many, many shopping malls. Uh, there's one across the street, an old shopping mall where the TSC is located. On the left, we have a new bank uh, going in, a credit union. And that used to be a great area to see cabbage white butterflies and the yellow sulfurs. So we'll no longer be able to see them. OK, we're turning right, going down uh, Route 100 south. We're headed to our destination. All along here on the right and the left there used to be a lot of milkweed as you can see. Now we have grass and other weeds and they even sprayed along here this year. So the milkweed for the monarch butterfly is disappearing and putting the monarch butterfly's life in jeopardy. Monarch populations are 90% down for the year 2014. This used to be all milkweed on the left hand side and on the right hand side. There is a small patch down here we're approaching it very soon here. Uh, there's still just a teensy bit of milkweed left here as soon as we get there. Right about there some on the right hand side. So that's about all the milkweed we have along here anymore so it's pretty tough on the monarchs. We have another shopping mall down here. This one is Pottstown Center and it, it has destroyed a lot of butterfly habitats as well. It's approximately a 20 acre facility. Now we've just entered the borough of Pottstown. Uh, Pottstown was founded by John Potts in 1752. And John Potts was an iron master. He at the time, uh, Pottstown was named Potts Grove. And it was called Potts Grove until uh, 1815 when the name was changed to Pottstown. Uh, the John Potts, uh, right here in this area where we're sitting, had a 995-acre plantation. Uh, he purchased it from William Penn, and uh, he had 10 slaves and several indentured servants. And in 1760, he laid out the, the borough of Pottstown, and when he did that, he tried to copy uh, Philadelphia. We are headed to the Potts, Potts Potts Grove Manor Development, that's where I live, which is named after uh, uh, Potts Grove, which used to be Pottstown. So we'll be there as soon as this light changes. We're at Shoemaker Road. And this used to be all uh, open land here where the Friendlies is. There were a lot of cabbage butterflies, a lot of sulfurs. No longer see them. So we have a lot of roads. Uh, even the roads uh, destroy habitats. The plants that butterflies lay their eggs on aren't around. They're called the host plants, and there's no nectar to feed on. So we have habitat destruction everywhere we look. A 
another nice parking lot on the left hand side where there used to be a lot of milkweed growing and this year they sprayed it and that milkweed no longer is there. We're now turning right on King Street and we're pretty close to our destination which is the Protsgrove Manor housing development. Pottsgrove Manor itself is just to our left, about a quarter of a mile down the road, and that's where the John's Pot, the, uh, the Pottsgrove Manor mansion is located. We're turning into the Pottsgrove Manor development now, and we'll be at our destination in a couple minutes. We have nice wide streets here. your butterfly habitat uh, when you first moved into this neighborhood? Or? Actually, uh, we moved here in 1993. We started our butterfly habitat in uh, 1994. And uh, I forgot to introduce uh, Butterfly Pua, who just asked that question. Mm -hmm. Butterfly Pua Schmidt is my neighbor. Mm -hmm. And uh, Butterfly Gus is our cameraman today. And his daughter, uh, Butterfly Carly, is along with us too on our butter butterfly excursion. We're on West Beach Street now, so we'll be there soon. 344 West Beach. And how many butterflies have you guys seen so far? I've had six monarch sightings this year. Well, how many have you seen on our trip, though, that we just made here? Oh, none. <laughs> yeah, I, I did not see one butterfly as we drive up here. Uh, I haven't seen any. Now the weather today, it's a little cold for butterflies. They like it about 85 degrees and it's a little bit cloudy. Butterflies need sunshine to fly. They're cold blooded. And uh, so it's a little chilly today. And after uh, the rain we had yesterday, uh, some of the butterflies are still sleeping actually. The big butterflies sleep up in the trees. The small butterflies sleep down in the weeds and sometimes on the flowers themselves. We have arrived. Okay, we have uh, reached our destination. We're at uh, 344 West Beach, and uh, we haven't seen any butterflies yet, but uh, let's take a look at the milkweed. We have a backup supply of milkweed in the front yard. This is for the monarch butterfly. This is called butterfly weed, Asclepius tuberosa. It's an orange milkweed. It grows wild in southeastern Pennsylvania. It is a native. So all, we have all three of the milkweeds, they're all natives, uh, swamp milkweed. This is the swamp milkweed here. And then the common milkweed is uh, this one with the big pods. This is common milkweed here. The monarch butterfly has to have this plant to maintain its life. No milkweed, no monarchs. Hey, there's a cabbage butterfly. First one we've seen. We finally saw a butterfly. Let's head out back to the butterfly habitat. Okay. Right here we have the uh, spice bush tree. This is the host plant for the spice bush swallowtail. Uh, this is about as big as a tree gets. It could go as high as 12 feet. They grow along the edge of the woods. It's a native plant and uh, it smells real spicy. Uh, this year we harvested 15 caterpillars uh, off of this tree and I was able to raise those butterflies and um, all but two uh, became butterflies. Two of them were uh, attacked by a parasitic wasp, and the uh, I had two wasps born instead of all butterflies. I had I had two wasps, and the rest were spice bush uh, swallowtail butterflies. So this is a tremendous tree. If you grow, if you go along the edge of the woods, though, looking for uh, caterpillars, and you see all these trees, you're going to have a hard time finding one. But if you have nectar like we have here along with the tree. You can have one tree, you'll still get the caterpillars. So it's pretty easy. About how old is this tree, Ron? Uh, this tree here is about uh, 15 years old. Okay. So it's been here it's almost, not quite as long as the habitat itself. And uh, I believe I got it at French Creek State Park, I think. Next, we're gonna discuss the uh, plants that butterflies feed on. Butterflies drink nectar with their proboscis. They have a straw that they curl down into the plants and, the, and right into the cup of the flower. Hopefully we might get to see that a little later on. Before we get totally into that, I wanna to cover today's weather because the weather's the most important thing here. First of all, you need a southern exposure or a southwest exposure. When we moved in here back in 1993, we didn't know we'd be doing this, 
but south is right here. So you need full sun for butterflies. No sunshine, no butterflies. Every time I go out to give a talk, I always say that. I start my talk, it's all about sunshine. I end the talk, it's all about sunshine. I don't care how many flowers you have, you're not gonna see a thing. It's a little bit cool today. I just checked the temperature, it's 82. The ideal temperature for butterflies in full sun is 85 degrees. They're cold-blooded, so they need it to warm up to be able to fly. A butterfly can fly at approximately 70 degrees. Monarchs can fly at 65 degrees, sometimes a little lower. Uh, it, it depends there, but almost all the other butterflies need, need uh, nice warm temperatures. This is the number one attractor, Verbena bonariensis. It's from South America. This little skinny plant attracts 80% of the butterflies we see here. This year we've had uh, 28 species. We're 25% down. Uh, we've been averaging the last two years 38 species, which is very good for an urban habitat. It's hard to attract butterflies in the city. Very, very difficult. So right now all we have on here is bees, so hopefully it'll pick up here later as we go. Well now, Ron, where do the butterflies go when they're, the sun's down? When the sun's down, and it was um, quite a bit today, the big butterflies go up in the trees. The monarch will go up into a tree and rest up there. One slept out front uh, two nights ago in the pine tree out front in the Norway spruce. The small butterflies will rest down in the weeds or in the flowers themselves. Like those little white ones you see flying around. One actually slept out here in the Verbena bonariensis last night after the rain. Um, there is a silver spotted skipper in the back there. It has the state of Texas on the side, <laughs> on the Verbena bonariensis. Yeah, he's brown orange and white. I always say that white mark is the state of Texas on the side. Oh, there he is. Cabbage butterfly flying by. Uh, again, this is the number one attractor by far. We're ready for the number two attractor, which is butterfly bush. Okay, okay that's the silver spotted skipper on the Verbena bonariensis. Uh, it has orange at the top. It's brown with the white markings. It looks similar to the state of Texas. And the next uh, number two attractor is butterfly bush, Budlia. It smells like perfume. Budlia is from China. So the first two uh, plants that I'm talking about are not natives, although we have about 300 native plants on the property. And we'll be getting to them shortly here. So butterfly bush is the, the best attractor uh, of all the butterfly bushes. There's different colors. There's white. There's um, um, Summer Beauty, that's what that is. Uh, Pink Delight is the number one attractor. That's this one here, by far. What they do, they breed these butterfly bushes, and when they do that, there's less and less nectar in them. So some people have gotten the, the yellow butterfly bush, and it has no nectar, it doesn't attract anything. So. Now, how do you get your butterfly bushes to maintain the flowers all year round? Mines are looking kind of... Okay, what you do, these butterfly bushes can be cut back any time. You can cut them back in the summer, spring. Um, I'll be getting ready for the monarch migration, which here, the busiest days are September 21st through September 26th. That's the primary uh, time for the monarchs uh, migrating through the backyard here. So we'll cut them back. We might even cut them back between these at the bottom of these three flowers. We cut them back fairly hard. But before we do that, we have to make sure it's gonna rain. I don't bother cutting back if it's not gonna rain. We can't get any new growth. So one of the main things we do study here is the monarch migration. And during a good migration, we'll have as many as 200 monarchs a day coming through here in the city of Pottstown. We don't have to drive to Cape May to see it. Okay, that's number two. Number three is this tall orange plant over here. Okay, uh, our next plant is um, Tithonia, which is also called Mexican Sunflower. There is a monarch on the uh, Tithonia plant right now. This plant is critical during the monarch migration. 90% uh, of the monarchs are gonna land on this. This plant's native to Mexico, they recognize it. So they already know it, since the monarchs go to Mexico, they know about Mexican Sunflower, so they land on it here when they're traveling. And we have this lined up when, uh, when we tag the monarchs and we throw them up, they all fly southwest right over here. We have these plants lined up in direct sun. We have all the orange uh, Mexican sunflower in the warmest, hottest area. And as we just saw, the monarch will land on the very top one. That's the warmest one. The one that Butterfly Gus just filmed was way up on the top. 
And uh, that's critical. Again, it's all about sunshine and heat. Heat, heat, heat. You can't fly without heat. So uh, this is an incredible plant. It is an annual. You have to plant it every year. I did forget to mention uh, Verbena bonariensis and butterfly bush are perennials in our area. Last year, though, we had a cold winter, and I lost 20 butterfly bushes. And I even mentioned that in my book. If it goes below 20 degrees at night, you have a good chance of losing your butterfly bushes. And my goodness, we had zero weather last year. So many people uh, lost their butterfly bushes. And I had to start over. I'm rebuilding the habitat as we speak. In the back here, that used to be all six, seven feet tall. And now you can see it's about three feet tall is all. So this habitat has all been redone because of the, the poor winter. The next three attractors are um, common milkweed, swamp milkweed, oops, I skipped butterfly weed. Butterfly weed's number four, common milkweed number five, swamp milkweed number six. We already saw those out in the front yard. Uh, the butterfly weed, the orange one, is in the wild. You can see almost maybe sometimes 10 to 12 butterflies on one plant. So it's in a tremendous attractor as well as providing uh, food for the monarch caterpillars. So now we're going to go to the field thistle. And that's this plant here. This is pretty much done blooming. We're kind of in an unusual situation today, which it's, it's uh, probably a good thing in a sense. Most of the flowers are still blooming, and this is not a normal thing. We've had a lot of cold nights, a, a lot of cold days in the 70s. And uh, I just saw, I see a comma butterfly over here with punctuation on the milkweed. I'm sorry, we uh, are going to have to interrupt our thistle talk here for a second. See that line on the, on the side? That's the comma. has the comma punctuation on the side. Butterfly Gus, you think you can get that? You're, you're on it, huh? All right. So uh, anyway, uh, field thistle, in the wild especially, this is a native. You're not allowed to grow Canada thistle. Canada thistle blooms in June. Now today is August 14th, so this is field thistle. And uh, Butterfly Carly, you want to feel this flower? Wow. Soft as a paintbrush. Yeah. So, but the plant itself is not. So. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the plant's not too healthy. We had a lot of disease this year with the cold nights. It was very difficult to grow plants. This was a tremendously difficult growing season. Uh, the next one is number eight. That was number seven. That's State Fair Mixenia. It's in the back. This, uh, the next plant is uh, State Fair Mixenia. You have to be careful when you're getting zinnias to attract butterflies. It has to have the yellow center. There's a star in there. That's where the nectar is. So now they're coming out with a lot of zinnia hybrids. They do not attract butterflies at all. So this is State Fair mix. And here's another one here. Uh, you can see the yellow in, in, in this one a little bit better. So the butterfly sticks its proboscis right down inside that and gets the nectar. This will be a, a really nice attractor in the next few weeks. We still have six weeks to go for butterfly season. As the season goes on, we get closer to that first frost. Uh, more butterflies will be landing on the State Fair mix India, including the monarchs during the migration. It seems like they tolerate other plants well. You have verbena mixed in with your Yeah, um, This is not a good idea really overall because your plants need air or they'll get sick. But uh, I like to do it and try it. I, I, I hate to throw any uh, verbena butteriensis away because it's the number one attractor. So. Um, you can get away with uh, putting this uh, Verbena bonariensis in with the State Fair Mixenia. Here's a milkweed I left out. This is tropical milkweed here. This is another host plant for the monarch, for the caterpillars. This is an annual. Uh, this does not come up every year. The other milkweeds are all perennials. They'll come up every year. All right, our next plant is purple coneflower. It's right beside us here. It's done blooming. Purple coneflower normally blooms in June and July. This year it almost went all the way to August because of the cold weather. We've had an extremely cold summer compared to the other uh, 20 years that I've been here. As a tiger swallowtail zooms by. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, it looks like a lot of the native plants finish blooming early. Is that why you have the Mexican ones to carry the nectar through the season? That's a good point. A lot of the native or? plants do uh, bloom early. Now that you brought that up, Butterfly Pua, how does this all work for butterfly gardening? Well, in the, in the early part of the year, like in June and, and uh, May and June, the butterflies are out in the wild on the wildflowers. 
Then when those flowers become dormant, they come to your backyard mm -hmm. uh, to nectar on the plants that we have here. So this is the best time of year because all the plants in the wild now are dying out. So when you drive down the road, you don't see too many flowers. Our next plant is, uh, Oh, I forgot. Yeah, we were doing the uh, purple cone flower, also called echinacea. They make cold medicine from this. You can buy it on the shelf at the at the pharmacy. So this is a nice uh, nice plant. It's uh, it's native, and uh, the, the butterflies recognize it at the beginning of the year. You want to get the butterflies interested at the first part of the year, so they'll hang around and go on the other plants as the season wears on. Butterfly season is July, August, and September if you live in town like I do. If you live in the city, it's July, August, September. Our next plant is uh, another native. The number 11 plant, or the number 10 plant, I should say, is uh, late flowering bone set. Normally blooms in September. It's already blooming in August. Um, it has a, a nice uh, white flower on it. This gets a lot of rare butterflies. This plant I brought in from the Susquehanna River. So um, it likes uh, sandy and damp soil, but we treat it pretty well here. It's by itself, so it grows just fine in just about any kind of soil. Hair streak butterflies go on it, the real small ones. There are a couple hair streaks in the garden today. Uh, I don't know where they're at at this moment in time. We'll try to find them a little bit later. Butterfly Gus, could you film that uh, hummingbird moth here on the Verbena bonariensis? My favorite. That's the hummingbird moth on the, uh, the top attracting flower, Verbena bonariensis. You can see it putting its proboscis down into the cup of the flower, getting the nectar. The nectar is like sugar water, so what you're doing here is you're feeding the butterflies. Ron, is this bone set a native plant as well? This uh, lay flowering bone set is native. I see we have a cabbage butterfly that's just joined There's us a on the Verbena Bonariensis. Tiger swallowtail just went by. Here he comes. The butterflies become more tame after they've mated. So uh, as, as the season goes on, uh, the next couple weeks, you can walk out here and almost grab them with your hands. They'll be so tame. The mating aspect will be over with. Uh, some butterflies only have one brood, uh, such as the olive hair streak. We usually see it in July. Apua said she saw one today at her house. Butterfly I did. Pool. I saw one this morning. Uh, it's kind of a rare butterfly. It lays eggs on red.